السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فمن يرد الله أن يهديه يشرح صدره للإسلام ومن يرد أن يضله يجعل صدره ضيقا حرجا كأنما يصعد في السماء كذلك يجعل الله الرجس على الذين لا يؤمنون وهذا صراط ربك مستقيما قد فصلنا الآيات لقوم يذكرون صدق الله العظيم When we look at our surroundings, we can see that we are living at a time where everyone feels that he is in hardship and difficulties. Every person is so disturbed with the way of life that he or she is living. Some people are not satisfied with their children, with their behavior, or with the behavior of their children. Some are not satisfied with their spouses. Some are having problems from the side of their brothers and sisters. And then finally a stage come in our lives when we realize that we ourselves are not living the type of life that we are supposed to live. And a person is not satisfied even with him and herself. After spending 30, 40 or 50 years in this world, if we look at our achievements, Can we really find people who would say that I really achieved my goals and this is what I wanted to achieve from this life and now if I leave this world I'm okay? Or we would think no really I have to make up for my past because my past wasn't as good as it was supposed to. I didn't achieve anything out of this life and whatever I got is useless. If we really wanted to find a person who would serve as, as an example that I would go to this person and tell him, you know, I feel I have one dua that would be accepted. Tonight I have to make that dua. By looking at your outer look, at your appearance, your lifestyle, I feel that I want to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make me like you. Would we find that person who will say, go ahead, make that dua and you will be the most satisfied person in the world? If you be like me, this will be the greatest blessing for you in this world. Or, majority of the people will say, Make sure you don't make this mistake. I'm sure every one of us will say, if a young person would come and for, just for an advice, that I want to make dua to Allah to be like you, we would advise that young man that please don't make this mistake in your life. 
I don't want to carry the burden of two people. Right now I'm carrying my own burden. What is taking all of this peace of mind away from us? What is the cause behind all of this? Is there any solution or this is something that has no solution in the world? Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create this world and this life and human beings in this status that they will always be in this situation? Of course not. Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make this world this way. It's only that we through our own deeds made this life, life so miserable for ourselves. And because of our own way of life, making decisions without knowing what Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, setting goals without going back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, choosing lifestyle disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are the major steps of our life. We took them without knowing what Allah wants, what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants, what Quran says, what the ahadith say, what this deen say. And therefore, we end up making major mistakes about decisions of our lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in this ayah of Quran that I have just recited from Surah Al-A'raf. فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ When Allah wants to guide someone, He opens His chest for Islam. وَمَنْ يُرِدْ أَنْ يُضِلَّهُ يَجْعَلْ صَدْرَهُ ضَيِّقًا حَرَجًا كَأَنَّمَا يَصَّعَدُ فِي السَّمَاءِ When a person is misguided, Allah closes his heart and makes it very narrow. This is what difficulties are all about. His heart is closed and harajan becomes very narrow. The example of this person is just like the one who is going up towards the skies, towards the heaven. If a person is going up it won't be too long before this person will start losing oxygen. This is the first thing will happen. That a person will start losing oxygen. And first effect of that would be pain in the heart. I can't breathe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when a person goes away from the hidayah that came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the life that the person would be spending in this world. Dayyiqan haraja. Very narrow. The heart will always feel difficulty. I'm dying. I really wish I, want, I would die out of these hardships and difficulties that I have to go through. I wish I was never living because of what these people are doing and because of what the others are doing. This person is living on the earth. Allah made this earth for us to live, but he lives just like a person who's going up towards the skies. Losing oxygen all the time, feels like he can't breathe anymore. This is how difficult and miserable the life becomes for this person. The effect of going away from the hidayah of Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's take a simple example. Sometime, we are going somewhere and you don't have your GPS system with you. You are following a map, all of a sudden you felt that you took a wrong exit or you are going in a wrong direction. Imagine what will go through this person's mind at this time now. How disturbed this person would be. How am I going to find my way now? Should I go this way? Should I continue? I can't find an exit. With all the means of the luxury, the car is the same. He has water in the car. He has air conditioning in the car. He has food in the car. He has company in the car. Yet, you see the person is sweating. Totally disturbed. 
And he will not have that peace of mind until he would realize and he would make sure that he's back on the right track. All of that disturbance was the effect of what? Being on a wrong direction. Otherwise, all the other things are still there with him. Only a few minutes earlier, when he thought he was in the right direction, he was so peaceful. All of a sudden, when he realized that no, he's going in the wrong direction, lost the peace of mind. Didn't lose anything else. Physically, this person did not lose anything else. But the only thing that he realized now, that he is on the wrong direction. Imagine if the direction is wrong in this dunya from one street to another street, and this is how much disturbance that would cause to a human being, how disturbed this person would be if he's away from the direction of the Jannah and will heading towards Jahannam. How disturbed this person would be at the end, our ruh, the soul that came from Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ When I make this human being and I blow my ruh into him, then only you do the sayda for him. That was the instruction to Malaika when doing sayda for Adam alayhi salam. So this ruh knows that we are heading towards a wrong direction. This is why the ruh is always disturbed and we never have a peace of mind. This is the reason behind not having that peace of mind. Instead of having all of these means of the luxuries of the world, but we don't have that peace of mind because our ruh realizes that you are heading to a wrong direction. This is not the direction was given to you by Allah and His Messenger wasallam. This is not what the deen of Islam is teaching you. فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ When Allah wants to guide someone, He opens His chest, His heart for Iman, for Islam. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once recited this ayah to Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een, Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een, knowing the importance of having this blessing of Allah, that Allah would open our heart for Iman. Our heart will be open for Islam. This is very important that Allah opens our heart for it. Imagine Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, such a great prophet of Allah, makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, qala rabbish rahli sadri. Same words are being used. Qala rabbish rahli sadri. Ya Allah, open my chest, open my heart. For this deen of yours. Rabbi shrahli sadri. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when mentioning his great favors on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to him, Alam nashrah laka sadrak? Then we open your chest. Now Allah is telling me and you the same words are being used. Pay close attention to the wordings of Rabbul Alameen. Musa alayhi salam, Rabbi shrahli sadri. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam makes dua. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, Alam nashrah laka sadrak. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now tells me and you, it's our turn. فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ If you are guided to the scene, to the straight path, you will see that your heart is open for Islam. Your heart is looking for Islam, is accepting Islam. What does opening the heart mean in this situation? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he recited this ayah to Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een, Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een right away asked this question, Ya Rasulullah, what does opening the chest for Islam mean? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, said, يَدْخُلُ فِيهِ النُّورِ فَيَنْفَسِحُ لَهُ The noor of iman goes into the heart and the heart starts accepting this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the noor of iman gets into the heart, now the heart looks, when, whenever you see the, anything from the hidayah, when a person looks into the Qur'an, he sees noor over there. Yes, I like this. I want to accept this. This is noor over here. This is light over here. The noor, there is noor in the iman that is always accepting the hidayah. At this time, the situation is that when a person sees an eye of Quran, a message from the hadith, first thing comes to our mind, what is my reason and my excuse for not following it? I'm not doing it all because of this and because of this and because of this. 
Maybe time. Sometime we blame the time. Sometime we blame the country. Sometime we blame the laws of the country. Sometime we blame our own spouses. My wife will not accept it. She doesn't like no beard. And my wife, she gets allergy by hair. Subhanallah. He doesn't shave his head. So, uh, we, we put our blames on different people. Sometime on our children. That you know, what can we do? Children, they, they, they demand these things in this part of the world. The first thing after getting an order of deen, we think about what is the reason, what could be my reason for not following it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us that when the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the heart for iman, now the person looks for ways of doing it, not for ways of not doing it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our heart for iman. The hadith still continues. And Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَهَلْ لِذَلِكَ مِنْ alama. Ya Rasulullah, okay, now we understand that the nur of iman will get into the heart, but there has to be some signs by which we know that if I have that nur of iman in my heart or not. When I look at my wife, I can know if she has the nur of iman. When I look at my children, I would know if she, they have the nur of iman. When I see my friends and the company of people that I associate with, I can find out if they have the nur of iman or not. They asked about signs for this, but the hadith will get too long and the time is over. So inshallah, some other time or whenever you get a chance, open any of the books of Tafasir in Surah Al-Araf, Tafsir ibn Kathir, Tafsir Al-Qurtubi, and all most of these Tafasir have this hadith. And Mustadrak Hakim, Imam Bayhaqi rahimahullah also have mentioned this hadith in Shu'ab Al-Iman. So then we can look into that, but let inshallah, first thing, have the willingness of having this nur of iman and then inshallah we'll look at the signs of iman also may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to sirat al-mustaqim and open our hearts for iman for the hidayah to accept the deen of allah to accept every, each and every order that comes from allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to be willing to follow the sharia of islam aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'iril muslimin wal muslimat wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah